paper by fiber will get a D-bar operator uh, for tensor product of this uh, bundle. So, uh, so we get uh, in this way a family act uh, this and uh, so uh, it will act from section of KL to uh, section of KL times uh, 0 1 of theta Okay, so basically, in each fiber, I have a D-bar operator, and then they, I put them all together to get a family of them. Okay. And uh, so in this case, um, so the, the, the index, so if, uh, so the transform space is a, a contractible space, you know, and, uh, but for uh, the index of a D bar operator on uh, <coughs> a fa uh, and then it's a family over a compact base, so when it's parameterized by a compact space, it lives on the K theory of the, the space typically. Yeah. Is family over the power of the integration? Uh, so it's act fiber by fiber, it's parameterized by the attachment of space. So for each point, you get a D bar operator. Uh, so here I think of it as a family. So, it, so I think of this as describing the whole family of operator at the same time, yeah, but the x they, they <coughs> you know, only differentiate fiber wise yes, in the vertical direction. The parameter space is how well t. The parameter space is uh, t. So here you mean the space from t to I, well, I, I, you, there's many ways you can write it. Uh, so here yeah, I, I wrote it this way, but. Uh, um, yeah, no, uh, correct. But it also acts on smooth function on the smooth section in that sense too. But. Uh, I guess for the index, you, you're right that uh, probably I should write uh, that you act uh, on this infinite bundle of smooth function over uh, T. Yeah. Uh, and so the index in this case, uh, so uh, in fact by Riemann Rock, you can see that the, the, the kernel and uh, the co kernel over each fiber always have the same dimension okay, because the, the the index formula we got uh, earlier on uh, well I, I forgot to say uh, the formula of Vaillant of course I agree with what you get with the Riemann Rock theorem in this case uh, I think it, that's uh, uh, for me at least that was a very uh, uh, pleasant thing to notice because this result of Vaillant there's many techni uh, technical detail uh, in his thesis and uh, you always worry that there's a sign mistake somewhere, or but uh, well, the <coughs> checking it with just a basic example like the Riemann-Rock theorem uh, indicate that uh, things uh, work well. Okay, so uh, it agrees. Um, <coughs> so, but in any case, by the Riemann-Rock theorem, or uh, by the, the index doesn't depend on which Riemann surface you pick. It just depends on the number of cos and the genus. So the dimension is always the same. So both are vector bundle over the attachment of space. And uh, so usually you would think of the index as a k, k class. So you look at this up, up to k class. But uh, well, here, since the space is contractible, that wouldn't be so uh, interesting, the, this k class. Okay, you just capture the index, basically. But uh, since we have in mind to have this also making sense on the moduli space, which is a quotient of the Teichmuller space, uh, what we see is that if you can get a local formula for the index that behaves well under action of the modular group, uh, the formula will descend on the moduli space where it uh, will acquire some uh, meaningful cohomological uh, 
significance or well, it will, it will occur some uh, yeah, common logical uh, meaning. Okay, and <coughs> so the the index formula. was uh, generalized to uh, families um, so by uh, Pierre Alba and I. So uh, if when you have a K class, what you want to do is take the, to get a common class, you take the churn character and uh, so thinking of this this way, so you get a representative of this churn character, uh, the level of uh, form. Okay. And uh, so this sort of formula, it, it's work uh, in the, the same sort of generality as uh, the thesis of Vaillant, but applied to this case, uh, so what you get is now uh, you, you get form uh, on the Teichner curve, so, and uh, instead of uh, integrating them completely, you just integrate fiber by fiber. And then when you do this, you'll get form downstairs. Yeah. So just push forward. But uh, the same uh, expression, so the chain character of KL times the, the top class of, the, uh, of each fiber. Okay, so those will have vertical direction, but also horizontal direction. So when you push forward, you will get a form downstairs. So that's similar to uh, uh, the other formula. Then uh, the eta invariant has to be replaced by eta form. So the eta invariant is a spectral invariant, and eta form is a version for family. So it, it tells you how the family of the spectrum of each operator behaves. Uh, so there's one for the vertical operator, and then there's one for the horizontal operator. And I put the at to say that those are eta form. And um, the interesting feature is that, uh, well, one has to say that uh, this formula with eta form, uh, usually the eta form part is quite hard to compute. It's remained very mysterious. Uh, but in this uh, case, uh, in fact, you can compute the form uh, explicitly. So one feature is that usually in this formula, each of the terms are not uh, closed form. Okay, so uh, to, co to compute the index, you need to know more than the cohomology class. Uh, or Well, yeah, there's no cohomology class, in fact. So you really need to need know uh, each of them uh, at the level of form. Okay. But... Uh, in this situation, uh, in fact, each of them is, a, in fact, a closed form. And, uh, so things are much uh, simpler uh, in a way. So, um, well, the, the eta form can be computed uh, explicitly. And, uh, well, in fact, for the, the, the one of the horizontal operator, is um, not much going on, in fact. So the, the eta form of, uh, uh, of uh, the horizontal one, so it's basically the, the same. So there's this sign, uh, or maybe I'll put it as a sum. sine uh, L minus 1 half, and then uh, sum I goes from 1 to N of the churn character of the kernel of uh, BBL. Okay, I guess in this case, the, this, the, the operator is just a matrix uh, or, or a family of uh, endomorphism. So it, there's, no serious, there's no regularization involved. And uh, uh, maybe that's for each uh, each cost. Yes, but, uh, okay, well maybe maybe with the bus was 
something of the sort. And each of these uh, bundle, so there's a connection in, uh, on them, induced, and uh, they are in fact uh, uh, trivial, trivial with a, a flat connection. So the, the upshot is that uh, there's only the part of degree zero that is involved. So the higher degree it is involved curvature term, but this bundle is trivial with uh, a trivial connection. It turns out so. Uh, so intuitively, uh, that, that's not surprising, but there's really something to, to add to it. But remember that uh, after some indentification, you could think of the kernel as just constant function. So uh, uh, there's, there's a bit more to add to it, but it turns out that you can really think of this as a, a trivial bundle. And uh, so the, the other uh, form, uh, so that's a result. I think there's other people who were interested in sort of eta form, but at least this, uh, this work of uh, Zhang in 84 that uh, computed uh, eta form for this sort of uh, operator, so acting on circle. Okay, so in this case, uh, what simplified greatly uh, is that the spectrum uh, the spectrum is always the same first. It's always uh, 2 pi z uh, for this family of operator. And what changes is that uh, the, the eigenvalue somehow. So, um, not that, no, sorry, not the eigenvalue, the eigenfunction, eigensection uh, changes. And, uh, but it's make it uh, more uh, computable. So I think this, this family is, uh, you can think of it as sort of parallel with respect to the, the connection. And uh, that makes uh, the eta form of this family computable. And uh, the answer that you get is that, uh, so if I think of this as standing for each operator at each cusp, uh, so, well, I forgot the, the size limit. So it's 1 over 2 tangent hyperbolic of i over 2. And uh, where uh, the i is the churn form of the circle bundle uh, on the circle bundle. So it has a, a connection, and so you, you can represent uh, it, it as an associated uh, churn form. Yeah. So the, the, the curvature, uh, basically the curvature times i over 2 pi uh, is this ei. And uh, so you, you can just replace uh, this in the, the formula. So you get uh, minus n uh, sine of uh, l minus 1 half. And then uh, minus uh, minus this thing. And well, I forgot to mention that uh, there's uh, some form that you can write it uh, well explicitly uh, in terms of the heat kernel. So some super trace of the, the E kernel, and uh, that's uh, exact. So it doesn't uh, really uh, play an important role in the formula, but uh, to have the local formula, you need to really have it at the level of form, and there's also this uh, term uh, occurring. So that uh, won't be too mysterious. Okay. And uh, so for the remaining of the talk, uh, so what I want to describe is the relationship of this result with the uh, result uh, maybe almost 20 years ago of uh, Taktajan and Zograph, where um, they were computing uh, the curvature of the determinant line bundle associated with this family. And so that, that will uh, relate a bit with what I was describing uh, yesterday also. Sign the just the sign, yeah. 
Uh, it's the number of costs. Yeah. The number of costs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just a number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Maybe I should mention that uh, the, the formula B is well under the action of the modular group. So things descend to something meaningful in the moduli space. Uh, so these, uh, if you, you look at it, it, it can be recognized as, uh, you can rewrite it as form representative of the um, Monfermarita classes. And uh, these uh, form here, you can recognize them as form representative of the Miller class. So the, that involve the, the rich system of the canonical line bundle at each market point on the, the surface. Uh, it depends on what you mean by zero. It's uh, the form, the, the, it's only involved, uh, it's a form of degree zero. So there's no higher degree. But it's a number, so. Uh, uh, the, the whole thing is the uh, yeah. No, well. If you think of it as a commonality class on the Teichmuller space, then uh, you're right that it's uh, it's not zero, uh, but uh, there's only something in degree zero. Yeah, it's a zero form. Yeah, zero form. Yeah. <coughs> and so you, you only capture the index, but if you uh, look at what's happened on the moduli space, or uh, if you have a map uh, into the the, the the Teichmuller space representing a family of Riemann surface, and you restrict, then you get something meaningful in, in cohomology. But on the Teichmuller space itself, uh, there's no cohomology except in degree zero. So uh, it's uh, just me. I assume as the shell form of the Proto-Rosso line bundle, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, basically, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so I, I was describing it in terms of circle bundle, but yeah. that basically correspond to, uh, I think I have to be careful with sign, but uh, that's uh, the churn class. Uh, so in fact, these f uh, the form representative was uh, also introduced uh, recently by Wolpert. So uh, that, that's that, that form that we get, uh, it's basically the same form as that Wolpert defined it for uh, these uh, tautological bundle. Moduli space. Okay, so uh, to to conclude, uh, <coughs> so I want to describe what's happening for the determinant line bundle. So, uh, so for this uh, family, the determinant line bundle is uh, easy to define okay, so the determinant of the, the index bundle uh, it's basically the so it's the top power of the times the uh, the top power of the dual of the So uh, you can define this determinant bundle even when the, the kernel and the co-kernel do not form bundle. But uh, uh, when they do form bundle, that's much easier to, to define. And um, so uh, <coughs> the so the L2 norm define it by uh, the family of uh, hyperbolic metric uh, G sigma. So uh, I forgot to say that in this family, so the, the, since this hyperbolic metric with cusp is uh, unique, it's what's called canonical, you, you have really a family of them on the Tachmanus case for, for each fiber. 
so it induces uh, uh, emission product, so uh, a norm uh, on uh, on the determinant bundle. That I'll denote uh, like this. But uh, so as as probably may most of you uh, know, uh, when you um, when you want to study the, the when you want to compute the curvature of uh, such a bundle by a choice of connection, uh, it's better to use a different metric uh, instead of this metric, and. So the discussion of yesterday uh, fits uh, now uh, in the sense that uh, the, the following uh, emission metric, so really it's, it's called the polymetric. is uh, more uh, useful or uh, more geometric. Uh, so you define it uh, to be uh, the determinant of this uh, Laplacian assisted to the Dirac operator. Uh, and I, I forgot the, the sign. Minus one half, and then times the times this norm, this L two norm. So when you you cannot uh, define it uh, directly in terms of the tensor product of this bundle, when the kernel and the co-kernel not form bundle, it's more tricky to define the determinant bundle. And in fact, uh, in that case, uh, to define uh, you have to define it uh, in coordinate patch, and then the metric that uh, fit nicely when you change coordinate patch is the equivalent metric. But here somehow you, you can just use this L2 metric, so it, it seems uh, more artificial, uh, this uh, equivalent metric. And uh, so where uh, here the determinant is given by uh, the exponential of minus the zeta function, the derivative of zeta function is zero, and the zeta function uh, is defined using the heat kernel. So the heat kernel in this context is not trace class, so you have to take this regularized trace I was discussing. But uh, So if you do this, And then minus the projection onto the kernel. So you, you get a, a nice uh, zeta function that has uh, some meromorphic properties regular at zero. Uh, so the only difference is that the kernel has some logarithmic term. So it will create some double pull somewhere. But at the origin, uh, it's still fine. And uh, so you can still define the, the, the zeta function. and. Um, So the the Quillen connection is the Kern connection with respect to uh, to this uh, the Quillen metric. So namely, it's holomorphic, and then it respects the emission structure. And uh, so the, the result is that uh, uh, basically, as in the compact case, so it has been studied by uh, Wismut and Fried, uh, that uh, if you compute the curvature, you will get exactly the two-form part of the local index formula. So that's in the compact case. 
And uh, the argument, uh, once you have the, the zeta function extend, in fact, into this case, and so what you get is that the, the, the curvature, um, or in fact the, the C1 form, maybe the, the, the Quinlan connection, uh, is given by the, the two-form part. Index formula, uh, but in fact, uh, the the nice thing, in fact, is to get rid of this uh, mysterious uh, exact form. But not involving uh, uh, the alpha, the the part of uh, degree two. Okay, so this form that doesn't was not playing an important role uh, was just a bit annoying uh, in a way, but. Uh, for the curvature of the connection, you get exactly all the meaningful part, and let's throw this away. Okay, and uh, so in fact, uh, what you get, and then using the fact that, uh, in fact, uh, as a result going back to uh, Wolpert, uh, so the Atia Singer term, the integral, uh, when you look at the two-form part, what you get is the weid peterson metric. So I think it's six L square minus six L plus one or twelve pi square. And then the the Wright Peterson Keller form and then uh, the other part is uh, this. So uh, as I said twenty years ago, uh, uh, Taktajan and Zograph computed the, the curvature uh, of this uh, um, of this line bundle, but instead of using the the zeta function, they, they didn't have it. They they were using instead, uh, or instead of using the determinant, they were using the Zellberg zeta function instead to uh, get around. Uh, and they were able to uh, more using uh, Teichmuller theory techniques to to compute uh, explicitly the, the the curvature with this metric. And so what we did to really see that well, in fact, we we, we get the formula, but uh, we can check also we can relate uh, explicitly the determinant with the Zellberg zeta function uh, in this uh, case with cost. Does the the depth of the the depth to with the amount Sorry, yeah, can you repeat? Yeah. So the data, so the depth yeah. in determinant yeah. coincide with a not free time approach to Zellberg zeta function. Yeah, so I think, uh, so it, de it depends on L. So uh, it's as in the compact case with no cusp. So uh, I think it corresponds to uh, up to a multiple, to uh, constant multiple depending on G and N. To uh, in fact that we we, we know if it exists we don't know exactly what it is uh, computed exactly we just know it just depends on g and n, but uh, it's the value of the zeta function at l, basically except at zero then it's the derivative of the zeta function of the Zellberg zeta function at zero, so it's the same sort of relationship that were known uh, in the compact case and in fact uh, for a determinant define it in a different way the, uh, in the cost case there was also this sort yeah, of. Uh, uh -huh. uh, that, that's the for and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in fact, th there's a more general formula. So, uh, when uh, Fong and Do Docker uh, first uh, proved their, they find this relationship, uh, then soon, soon after, the Sarnak uh, gave a, a formula that uh, uh, was relating the really the Zellberg zeta function with the uh, zeta function. Uh, and then from this big relation, you can re re find the relationship for all these uh, various. Uh, so we, we also get something of that sort uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, uh, but uh, yeah, and basically, so uh, what, what is interesting also is that uh, in the paper of Taktaj and Zograph, they, they find uh, 
the, this contribution is def they, they define it very differently. So this the Takta Jan Zograph uh, uh, Kähler form, and it's defined spectrally somehow. And those you, we have also a different spectral interpretation as eta form, uh, or you can think of them as curvature, but uh, so it gives a different point of view uh, for, for that direction. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop here. Thank you. <coughs> Um, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure I remember uh, fully the, that part. So, but in the, the, the compact case, that's the same issue. So this sort of uh, exact term in the local formula uh, uh, of the uh, index, uh, they arise too. Are you the degree they, they arise, you cannot get rid of them? Or? So, so they always consider modular e image of B and image of B bar. Oh. So that's something for term bar. Part of the issue is in the RPS not that specific term. Yeah, for, for the curvature. Yeah, that, that's one of the. Um, so somehow the, the way, uh, so what you do is you, you start with uh, the L2 connection uh, somehow, and then what you, you add to make it quillen, you, you use this uh, alpha somehow. Uh, think, uh, uh, so you, you, you have the, the L2 connection, and then you add a, a term uh, like this that would still keep it holomorphic. And uh, so on one way, you want to be uh, Hermitian with respect to the quillen metric. And these beta, they are built out of these uh, uh, exact form uh, somehow. And so um, uh, I, I, I don't think I can give you a, a clear answer uh, on, on the spot like this. But uh, if you want, I, I can look at it. Uh, and uh, we can discuss a bit more uh, uh, maybe this afternoon. Or, uh, but yeah, so you, you basically use them uh, to make the connection fit, uh, make it uh, Hermitian with respect to the Quillen metric. And by doing this, uh, when you take the curvature, you'll get the contribution from this annihilating uh, the contribution coming from the, the local index formula. So that's uh, sort of what's happening, or what I vaguely remember. Uh, in fact, that would be uh, interesting uh, to have a so some device like this uh, for higher degree. Uh, I guess it it's probably doesn't exist, or it's very hard to find. Uh, since uh, even in the compact case, I, I don't know that it's, it's known. But that's the advantage in degree two. Uh, there's this uh, nice geometric way to get rid of the exact part. Uh, so, so, sorry, uh, the can you just uh, repeat slightly uh, the, the vertical and the horizontal uh, direction the yeah, 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 yeah. for the vibration or the yeah, uh, Oh, okay. The, these uh, these operator. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, so. So I guess the the the, the this two point of view. So the the way they arise uh, in the heat kernel, uh, and uh, but the way they are defined. So you have this. Uh, you have your Dirac operator, and then. Uh, you, you multiply by R, and uh, to define dV, uh, you, you restrict to uh, the, the boundary. So uh, the, 
th this operator is built out of a uh, uh, vector field of the form like this, and uh, I guess of the form. Uh, yeah, so the, the derivative in the normal direction just, you don't see it anymore, so you're left with just the direction tangent to the, the circle uh, when, when you do this. And um, um, somehow the, the, this operator uh, encode the behavior of this operator at infinity. So uh, here, th that's more related with uh, the, 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 this geometry. So uh, um, the R over uh, R plus E theta square. So that's uh, that's conformal to the cusp, but uh, it's a cylindrical n, infinite cylindrical n, and uh, this operate uh, this operator uh, somehow is the asymptotic behavior of the operator in the cylindrical n. Uh, so uh, changing it a, li a li little bit, you can really think of it as uh, uh, living on the infinite cylindrical n on both. That is, uh, it's an operator that is translation invariant, but here, what we remember is just the, the direction in the, the circle. Um, uh, and the, the, the other uh, operator, uh, it, it's called horizontal. Uh, here, there's no, the terminology seems a bit strange, uh, but uh, it's acting on the kernel. Yeah, so uh, uh, it's uh, acting on the, the kernel this. So an element of the kernel, that's a smooth section on the circle. And so what you do is uh, you extend that section to the interior uh, the way you want. Then you make the operator, uh, your direct operator, act on it. Then you restrict back to the boundary. And when you do this, there's no reason for the result to still lie in the kernel, so you project back to finish in the kernel. And it turns out the, the construction doesn't depend on the, the way you extend. And uh, it seems that the, the, the maneuver on the corner of the is flat, R. Yeah. Uh, uh, the depth of the boundary, elastic mm. boundary, because mm. uh, R square Yeah, the, the this one, this one. Uh, the the mean of the corner. Uh, the meaning of the total operator that there is friction in the height of the friction in the center does not change. How now will it operate? Uh, does not change. Uh, change. Uh, R squared still will be R. What is it that the that boundary? It's it slips on the circle. Ah, uh, when the when yeah. this is zero. Yeah, no, it's so that uh, you just assist uh, tension uh, by taking lines on there. To make the yeah, well, uh, so, uh, so there's uh, so uh, I must say th this technique uh, we apply also to a, a context that is sort of related for the moduli space of parallelic bundle mm -hmm. on the Riemann surface. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, in this case, uh, this example of uh, operator uh, who are in Fredon, but because the vertical family is invertible. And in that case, uh, you, you, you still get the eta, you get the eta form for, for this term. And so tactile and zograph, in fact, uh, also they, they, they have a result for a formula for the curvature of the determinant line bundle for the, in this uh, context of parabolic vector bundle. And um, so, uh, yes, so the, you have, you, in, in that context, you have situation where uh, you don't have any DH. Sometimes it's. But nevertheless, so the, the, the term, the term from the top is angle, mm -hmm. from bound is positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I would, so the, the way I remember the, the tactile zograph uh, Kähler form is defined, you sort of need this uh, Eisenstein function. Yeah, so you need the continuous spectrum or the sort. And yeah. if this is invertible, then you just yeah, have a discrete yeah, spectrum. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I guess, uh, 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 you know, I, I forgot in the parabolic case if they have a sort of a tactagon zograph scalar form. Uh, I guess they could. Um, yeah, well, the, 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 you, the, in any case, the, the eta form version still exists, still makes sense, uh, but uh, probably you don't have a definition of a, a Kähler form using this Eisenstein function in, in this case because you don't have a continuous spectrum. Uh, uh, <coughs> so I'm, I'm not, maybe we can talk. Uh, uh, I'm a bit, yeah, I'm not sure I understood the, the question.